This video is about how to open a IRP, a new account in the state of Georgia. Now, the very first thing you need to do is a, establish a EIN number for your business. If you do not have an EIN number for your business, you need to go to the irs.gov website, click on how to apply for an EIN. Now, there's different ways you can apply for an EIN. You can apply online, you can apply by fax, you can apply by mail, and you can even apply by telephone. Once you establish your EIN number, then you can go to the Department of Revenue for the state of Georgia, click on IRP, open a new account. Once this page loads, you then need to read over the information provided. Now let's go to part one. Part one is the required documentations. Here you will see the required documentation that you need to provide in order to open a IRP account in the state of Georgia. Now today's video, we're going to talk about how to complete the form T239 new account application schedule five, excuse me, schedule G and form T138 vehicle application schedule A. Also, if you have a power attorney, you will need to complete the power attorney form RD1061. Now let's go ahead and click on form T239 new application. Now the T239 new application is in PDF form. Once this form is open, you then will read over the information provided, but I want you to take note that right here where it says required documents, here are the required documents one through seven that you need to either complete or provide in order to establish a new account. Now in section A, the register information, the full legal name must be your business name. The US dot number, the US dot number either be the US dot number that you solely own or you're going to use on you're going to use someone else's US dot number, you provide that US dot number. Here in this section is where you provide your EIN number that you established with the IRS. Now, as far as the business and mailing address, you provide the business address of your business and the mailing address where you want your documentation to be mailed at. Now, the contact person can be either yourself or someone else, but please provide the email, telephone number, and fax number if you have so. The carrier responsibility for safety information. Carrier full legal name must be provided, the US dot number, the address, email address, telephone number, and fax number. Now, in section C, this is optional. If you have someone um, filling out this form for you, you must provide their information, such as the full legal name or the full legal business name, address, contact name, email address, telephone number, and fax number. Now, in section, excuse me, now in section D, vehicle registration. Now, if you never had a vehicle registration, your truck never been registered any anywhere throughout any state, you need to click no current registration. You do not need to complete a plate number, a Georgia IRP account because you never your truck never have been registered. Now, if you have an out-of-state vehicle plate, you need to click this, and then you also need to provide your plate number. If you ever had an IRP account in the state of Georgia, you also need to uh, provide that information. Uh, and any um, you need to click whatever's applicable. And this question, have you had any ve uh, excuse me, vehicles been IRP registered under this account or any other account? You provide yes or no answer. Section E, here is where you sign your business name and your uh, business signature and sign the date. Now below, they do provide you with these, um, excuse me, instructions on how to complete the T2 two, three, nine form, which is a great resources if you have any questions. Now, 
We went over the T239 form. Let's go back to the next form that I previously mentioned, which was the form T138 vehicle application schedule A. This form is also a PDF form, so we're going to have to open it. Do note that you must read this entirely because they also have required documentation that you need to provide in order to submit all the documentations to this email address. Now for a new account, it tells you to complete the T239 IRP new account application along with this form. Now, if you're making any changes, it also tells you what you need to provide. Or if you need a, um, you're making changes like weight increase or either carrier respons uh, responsibility for safety, US dot number change, it also tells you what you need to provide. In section A, you need to provide the reason for the application. If there's a new account, you click new account, you do not provide the IRP, you do not fill out this information because you do. this is a brand new account. You wouldn't have that information. Now, just like the T239 form, the registrant information needs to be the your business name, legal business name, the US um, dot number that you're going to be using, and the tax ID number, which is the EIN number that you um, established from the IRS.gov website. Your business name, along with the mailing address again, and the contact person, it can be yourself or it can be someone else the email address, telephone number, and fax number. Now, here's the tricky part I find that some people have. Now, in section C, either you're a private carrier or for hire carrier, or you can be this as well. Now, most often you find that if you have a lease agreement, you sign a lease agreement, then you, have a, you are a for hire carrier. If you do not have a lease agreement, then you're a private carrier. And it also asks you the question, would the vehicle in the fleet operate in the state, in the state of Wyoming this register year? You click yes or no. Down in this section, you need to supply the maximum growth um, vehicle weight for each state you will be operating in. If you have any questions in regards to this, or any questions in regards to this entire form, they also provide you a website you can go to. Now in section D, here's where you list all the vehicles you will be operating under. So um, you, they would need your VIN number, the number of axles. If you don't know that, just Google it. Um, the owner's name, title, everything needs to be listed. The number of unit, everything needs to be listed here. So if you have more than one, you supply each one line by line, each truck line by line. Now, in Section E is a certification statement. Basically, you're saying that the information you provided is correct. So you print your name and you sign, date, and provide your position or job title. Here, the T138 form has instructions, which is a great resource if you have any questions or you get confused about the questions. They provide you with the required um, documentations and it let you know once you have all the completed information, where to email the documentation along with the form. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help.